Glasgow, once the second city of the British Empire, grew on the banks of the River Clyde, where trading and shipbuilding brought prosperity. The Clyde built Glasgow, and Glasgow built the Clyde. One museum uniquely celebrates this history. Clyde built. Alan Muir takes us on a tour. Welcome to Clydebilt Maritime Museum. Behind me is Thistle, a tobacco trader, crossing the Atlantic in 1735 with a cargo of tobacco for the River Clyde. In the 18th century, tobacco trade with America resulted in many local people becoming wealthy. They were known as tobacco lords. Amongst them were William Miller, John Glassford, Archibald Ingram, John Buchanan, and there are now streets named after them in Glasgow. Uh, if you just follow me here, please. The 1707 Act of Union came about because of ill-fated investments overseas. This is an example of a store set up in the colonies with goods manufactured in Scotland where we would trade with the local people. As well as trading in tobacco, sugar was also imported and an industry grew up in Greenock which survived into the 20th century. In the cotton industry of 1800, originally the mills were beside the rivers, but with the industrial revolution and the advent of steam, the mills were much bigger and uh, closer to the big population. Because coal and iron could be mined locally, the iron industry developed rapidly here and with James Nielsen's blast furnace in 1828, the, the heavy production of iron really took off. With the advent of steel, plates could be made thinner, stronger, therefore ships were bigger, boilers could operate at higher pressures, engines could produce far more power, and this could not be done with iron, only with steel. The River Clyde became famous for building ships and clay built became synonymous with quality and over a couple of hundred years thousands of ships were built in shipyards that became famous the world over. As well as shipbuilding, the River Clyde was also famous for trading. Originally, the cargo handling was labour intensive, all done by derricks, cranes, stevedores, dockers, and here an example of various cargoes being manhandled in the old days. This is a photo montage of the River Clyde showing the docks and quays that were built and here is a model of Prince's Dock, one of the largest. This is Rangitane, launched in 1949, she's a passenger refrigerated cargo ship and one of her main duties was to take migrants from Scotland to New Zealand.
Here are three foremen or gaffers with their hard hats checking the drawings so they can instruct the welders or the riveters in the construction of the, the ship side. Here we have a docker in the old days handling cargo with a cargo net and we'll see later how cargo handling has now changed significantly. Behind me you see different cargoes that were carried in the old days and the methods of stowing these cargoes. Originally the goods were transported in barrels but nowadays we use containers. Container ships nowadays can carry up to 14,000 containers. Here is our triple expansion steam engine, which is a typical engine used in many early vessels. Here is a small illustration of different products from all around the world. Lamb from New Zealand, fruit from Australia, prawns from Bangladesh, strawberries from Spain. The River Clyde naturally is wide and shallow and where we are here at Bray Head you could actually walk across it. We engineered the river by dredging and building training walls to allow cargo ships to come up and down the river. Here is a model of a hopper barge which is used in conjunction with a dredger. The Renfrew yards of Simons and Lobnitz were famous for building dredgers. And here is a model of an old suction dredger. These dredgers could be seen in many foreign ports in India, Bangladesh, Australia, West Africa. Nowadays we go on holiday to Spain and USA, but in the old days, in industrial Glasgow, we went down the water to places like Rossi and Lards and the Glasgow Fair and this was the vacation that they had then. This is our exhibition room. We have hosted many exhibitions over the years. At the present we are, um, have an exhibition about Cunard and in particular the, the QE2. Clyde followed developments abroad instead of being the first to introduce them. Orders for ships began to go elsewhere, and yards began to amalgamate with clothes. Denny, 1963. Simon Globnitz, 1964. Barclay Carroll, 1965. Searsfield in liquidation, 1965. And that concludes our tour of Clyde Built Maritime Museum. 
I hope you've enjoyed it. In the city of Glasgow, to say on the cows, if you live near the river, you'd work in the yards. The first thing I saw when I opened my eyes were the muckle great cranes that reached up to the sky, where we built the great ships of iron and steel. In the days the Mary, we built them right here. We built the great ships. That bright o'er the sea And knew there is no work for me And who would believe That we built the creations At the end of the forties A printer's design Say the cream of the welders By the name of Mackay He of twa logs and he in gobs A lesson he lift and I'll show you, young lads, how we build the great ships. And we built the great ships of iron and steel. And it is the Mary, we built them right here. We built the great ships that ride over the sea. And knew there is no work for me. And who would believe that we built the